Hey, how you guys doing? So this is Neil from MasterPayNow.com bringing you another free art lesson. I'm one of the top art instructors on Udemy with over 30,000 happy students all growing and learning. So grow with us. All right, let's get started. All right, so hey, in this video, I'm going to show you guys two softwares, Krita, which is free, PaintStorm, which is $20, and how to use my Bob Ross collection of brushes in each one. Now what's really cool about these brushes, now this is one of the paintings I, I actually just did today. Um, let me go ahead and show you that really fast here, kind of zoom in and show you some of this. And come down here to the waterfall. There's actually a, get this out of the way, girl coming out of the water. I always like to add something to tell a story. I don't like just doing just scenery. Here's another one that I did right here. Kind of tells a story. Guy's been gone a long time, just came back. It's called like the long wait or something. I did this in Krita. That was in Paintstorm, by the way. This one is in Krita. This one's in Paintstorm using, using my Bob Ross uh, paintbrushes. And what's cool about these brush brushes is they're made to be used with the same techniques that Bob Ross used on his show. So you can actually follow along and watch Bob Ross on one of these softwares, use my brushes, and actually do it. Now I'm going to show you guys where to get the brushes as well. Um, that will be on my website and they'll be free. But anyway, so um, using these brushes, you use like pretty much the exact same technique as you would as if you were you know, using real oils, which is cool. This one I used, I did this in Krita as a, as a quick test uh, of the brush of the brush engine. And I made a quick uh, oil brush. Uh, on the outside here is my mountain brush, my Bob Ross mountain brush. But everything else is done with my oil brush. And as you can see, it looks really good. I, li I like the oil brush a lot. Uh, it's a custom oil brush I made. It's actually in the Bob Ross collection. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here and learning how to use these brushes. So first I'm going to show you guys how to use the brushes in in Krita. And then I'll show you guys how to use the brushes in PaintStorm. Now it's pretty much the same. So I'll, when, I, when I show you PaintStorm, I'm only going to show you a couple of the differences in some of the brushes um, because some of the things are a little bit different. Um, but pretty much it's, it's the same. So what you can do in one, you can pretty much do in the other. They're, they're kind of universal. It's really cool. Like I said, you're just using Bob Ross's techniques. So the first thing is, is sky, right? So we have the, the main sky color down. I recommend just using the paint bucket and throw your main sky color down, whatever color you're working with, and then use your cloud brush. Now there's a couple different cloud brushes that are used for different purposes, and I'll show you some of those purposes now. So in credit, you click on it right here. Now, in order to install these, I'll show you that really quick. Go to settings, go to manage resources, now under Manage Resources here, you can see I already have it here, you want to import bundles. And you import the bundle. Now after you've downloaded, I don't know which file you have to, I, I'm a, you have to just download all three because I don't know which one's what. Put them all in the same folder somewhere on your computer so you know where they're at. When you import the, import the bundles, make sure you save it somewhere on your computer that you know where it's at. That way you can go ahead and, and uh, grab that file. And it'll, it'll probably show you the only file that's available. And that will give you both the, uh, it should give you the ABR, the actual brush tips that you need. And that, that is like, yeah, that's what the that same, same thing Photoshop uses. And then also the, pre, the, the actual brush presets. So they work right out, the, right out of the box, like they're ready to go. You just pick them up and they're good to go. And PaintStorm, I think it's, uh, you have to import the ABR files and then you have to, and I think I sent someone, and I, I, Yaakov, I, I, I totally forgot I had to send you the ABR files as well. So those brushes aren't working like they're supposed to probably. Um, yeah, they need the, you need the actual the brush tips shapes themselves. So I need to send you an ABR file that goes along with those uh, brush presets. But uh, that one you have to you basically just click. I'll show you how to do that in PaintStorm. It's really easy. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And learn how to paint like Bob Ross. And uh, if this is, you know... Well, actually, whether it's well received or not, I'm probably going to sometime here in the near future do a video where it's just strictly um, step by step. We'll do an entire painting using this using this system, basically using the Bob Ross system, but for digital. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the two uh, cloud brushes. We have the large cloud brush. That's going to be the one you use most often. You want to make sure it's a size that is pretty big, um, you know, depending on how big your canvas is. So let's say this was split in half, and there's, these are the clouds I'm doing up in the upper half. Then I'll probably make it somewhere around that size there. You can also set um, keys here to, 
you know, set to that. Unfortunately, you can't hold it. You have to actually click it, which is kind of annoying. So I usually just do it up here unless I need to fine tune it. Right now, when I like when I do when I do them, I like to first do a kind of like cyan kind of color like this, and then I like to lay that down first. And the reason why is this this better simulates the the Bob Ross style of of clouds that he does. And then you just do a little bit of white. Okay, so because remember when Bob Ross is working wet on wet, so when he's working, he has a color underneath there that's like picking up the color. So when he lays down his blue sky, his white will pick up that blue and they'll mix and blend together and he blends them together until they're like a nice light blue color so it doesn't look pure white. Then he might add a little bit of pure white in there uh, but that kind of blends in as well. Now how to use this brush is you want to just kind of do like like little circular motions. It's it's really the same thing as if you're you're using this brush here Bob. This is actually a Bob Ross official brush right here. Boom Bob Ross two inch brush two inch brush. <laughs> and so you, the same way that you just use like the corner of it here and just kind of little circle motions. You do something similar here with your pen. You just kind of put on there and just do little circle motions as, as if it were the actual brush. And so you just go in and, and lightly, I like to start really lightly, just very little pressure. Just like your Bob Ross, sometimes put a little more pressure just to kind of lay down some of that texture there. And then just light lightly do it in here just like that. I'm going to do it really lightly, let it fade off right there. I like to sometimes already start to kind of blend that bottom out. Boom like that. Now that's pretty much already already good and blended to go. And then you want to use something close to pure white. Sometimes I like to go towards the warm, it just depends. And now I'm going to put in a little bit harder. I'm going to just go toward the tops here where, where the light's coming from, the direction the light's coming from. Like that. And that's pretty much it. Now you can call it good at that if you wanted to, or you can take it a step further and you can use my cloud blender right here. Now you can use this to blend a lot of different things, but it's mainly meant to blend the clouds. And I just lightly, very lightly, soft circle motions, very lightly and just soft circle motions, just barely touch your, I'm just going to call it the canvas if that's okay, because I don't want to call it like a digital screen. Just lightly touch it, just barely touch it and lift up, lift up little circle motions and then lift up, lift up, lift up. It's like a half circle motion, like almost like I make a number six backwards. Just boom. What I mean, like most people draw a six this way, just do it this way, bam, bam. So you're like little half circle and then lifting up into the cloud, just like that. And just, that's what I'm doing over and over again. And then I do just pure circles as well. And then I can lift up the top here, just lift it up like that and just give a little bit of wisp, like almost like wind is carrying some of that top. Now if you want to, you can actually make this brush big and just kind of lightly, just barely touch it back and forth like that. And that will blend it out. But I kind of don't like the look in this program, how that ends up looking, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Personally, I just don't like that. And usually he didn't, he didn't really touch the tops. If you do touch the tops, just lightly touch them like that. Um, there are There is a blender brush in here that works pretty good for that uplifting. And it comes with the actual program, and I'm just going to go here to, to paint, and then go down here to the blenders, and I think it's the, yeah, it's this one here, the Texture Soft Blender. And if you make this one large, you can just whip it up like that, as you can see. And this one works really good for that, just to kind of get that quick, you know, wind bl blown look here. And I could probably zoom out. I should have probably done that cloud a bit lower. And so that's how you use the cloud brush. Now you use the cloud brush pretty much the exact same way in Paintstorm. But Paintstorm, there's a certain blender you can use and just kind of go back and forth. And it kind of really does soften the whole thing out. It looks really cool. So if you want to do that, it's really nice. And that's pretty much all there is to making clouds. And then there's the other cloud brush. Let's go back to Bob Ross Neal. And that is my small cloud brush. Now, the small cloud brush is really just that. It's made for small clouds. So I like to use it like right here. Just It has more texture and shape to the cloud like small clouds do. And you use the same way. Just kind of little small circle motions. I start out with kind of a lot of, not a lot of pressure, but more pressure. And then I kind of let off the pressure and I kind of fade it out. And then sometimes you can just touch it, just lightly touch it in little circles or even just a slight, a slight straight line. It's a very, very, very like micro circles like, 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 like this, like, like that. Just very, very micro little circles. 
and just work your way across and then bam like that. And if you want more control over the brush, it's really easy. Just click right here next to the palette thing. Just click this little icon right here. And you can go into settings and go to size setting. You can actually adjust this right here. And if you want to adjust that, you can just click this right here. And that's going to give you that that is going to be a straight line. Um, and I can actually do that because what's cool about this is you can temporarily do that. And then when you pick a different brush, look at now and go really small. And if I push harder, it'll get bigger. And if I push really tiny, it'll get really small. So that's if you just want a lot of control to get really small little little wisp of clouds. And then um, what's cool is if you just, I'm going to right click here, pick a different brush. It's going to go right back to those settings that I had before. So now if I pick that small cloud brush again and go in the settings here, you notice it's back to here. So you have to actually save if you want it to change it. It's cool, so you can do like, like quick changes and not have to worry about ruining your brush. So that's how you use it. Now, what's cool with this brush too is if you had like a moon, let's say this was a moon right here, and you wanted to do some dark clouds, this is one that works really good for that. So you go to some dark grayish clouds here, and bam, like that, and just kind of knock them in there. Like so. And that's actually what I did in that in that in that painting I showed you I just did today uh, for the moon in the background. Right, so that's pretty much it with clouds. Uh, another thing I like to use cloud the cloud brush for is because I don't have a like a soft brush. You can use the airbrush if you want to. I found that the large cloud brush actually works better for this. And so let's say we had an object and I probably should have painted that on its own layer, but that's alright. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this color here. I'm going to grab my oil brush. Uh, it doesn't like to work fast if I'm recording. At least not when it's that large. So I'll have to turn it down a little bit here. No big deal. I could just make a new layer and filled it. That would have been faster. Whatever. Alright, so Let's say we had a mountain or something, and so I'm on. Matter of fact, I might as well show you to make the mountain first, and then I'll show you the other thing to do with the cloud brush. So I have my mountain brush here. There's there's the uh, mountain texture and there's the mountain block in. We'll use the mountain block in first. Get it kind of large here. I'm gonna use. We'll use this typical kind of like dark brown color. It's almost black. I mean, it depends what kind of mountain he's doing. So if you just kind of bring it up like that, because it's a square, hold it at, hold it at the right angle. Now this has this program like Paintstorm has tilt support. So make sure that your pen has tilt support. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go in and manually change the angle of your brush so that it's fitting right like that. So that when you do this, it's like boom, and then boom. You know, it's it, it'll it'll make that shape the way you want it to. And we'll just bring this down here like so, just like that. Now, if you don't have the tilt support to where you can, you know, turn the shape like by tilting your hand, it takes a little bit getting used to, but it's really, it's really makes it a lot easier and faster, especially for making trees. But if you don't have that, we have to do is you have to go into brush tip here and see where the shape is. You have to actually change the angle of the shape right here manually. And what sucks is it doesn't show you in real time. And so as you change it, you have to just get used to where it's at. Um, so 44 degrees, I think, is where you need to be. But anyway, so let's just say this is a mountain. Now let's go ahead and use my mountain texture. I'll show you how to use that. So this is called Neil Mountain. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see this here. And for this one here, I'm going to use kind of a white color here. You want to just drag and just pull it down like this, just one stroke. And, and, and not too hard, just lightly. Now, this is what's so cool about this. Again, it's made to work as if you're using, and I'm going to just kind of go like this. I'm not going to do an actual real mountain here. I'm just going to kind of show how it's done. As you see, it leaves a lot of texture down. Let me see something here. I'm kind of curious if the texture just repeats itself over and over again. I think it does. Yeah, see number how many, yeah, it, at least you can paint over it, but Paintstorm doesn't do that. Paintstorm actually alters and changes the texture, like flips it around so it never repeats itself. It's really awesome, and that's 
should be standard in every program. Now after you lay that down, you want to go ahead and just lightly, lightly touch where you want there to be less texture. And if this is too bright of a color, then you know you can just you, you can use a less bright color. But I want to make this like almost like it's snow or something. And I'm just going over the parts I want less texture on. Usually at the top, there's a little bit less texture there. Like the, like so. And then I'm going to take another color. What's cool about this little the artistic color selector is pretty awesome. You can like scroll it around and pick a color you want. So say I want it to be more on the cool side. I can I can pick a cool gray here. I'm going to kind of a purplish one. I'm going to make it almost pure gray. And leave it kind of dark like that. You want to pull this the opposite side, and that's a little too dark. So I want to go down one more. Pull it down like this. Same thing, you just you're just lightly, barely even touching the canvas. I mean, you just want to barely touch the canvas. It's it's really just as if you're using that knife on on canvas. So if you're already used to traditional painting, this is a really this is really awesome because it really does give you that feeling like you're using. I like to add some of the color back in, like mix the colors back and forth. Bob Ross was very uh, simple when it came to colors. He just kind of painted things the colors that they kind of appeared to be. He didn't like use that kind of artistic painting. Sometimes he did. He used like, you know, blue shadows for his trees and things like that. But I really like to stick to a very like artistic painterly like look. Right, so now once you have your cloud there, or your mountain there, now that's a very, very basic mountain. You can make it a lot more complex than that. Um, I just wanted to show you very quickly how that brush is used. And uh, if I do a painting, like, you know, I, but basically that's really all it is. It's really fast. It's like Bob Ross. You can lay down mountains very quickly. And you can actually, like, swoop this off to the side, too. So you can kind of, you know, pull it off to the side. You can make it a little bit bigger if you need to. And just kind of swoop this texture off to the side. Now what I wanted to show you was what that cloud brush was for here. So typically here, after he would do this, he would he would take a, the same brush and just do little circles or first you know sometimes would pull it in the in the direction or do little circles and blend it out and then he would sweep it up and sweep it up and make the make the mountain kind of blend out. Well you can't really do that with this program so much. So you could you could try to use that one blender and uh, blend, start get the blending going. The clouds of blender is probably not going to work so good for this, but I'll show you like a technique. But anyway, well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you use a cloud blender, you can kind of start to get a little bit of blending, but see, it kind of adds this weird texture to it. It's like I said, it's meant for clouds, but you can at least just get the edges kind of blended out. Now, what you could try though is that one blender. So you can go to paint here and then go down to the blenders. And you have this uh, blender texture soft. This comes with the software, so that's why I didn't add it in. I might, you can easily add it in. It's really simple. I'll just show you how to do this really fast. If you right click on this, you can go to assign tag and then you can assign it to a tag like, you know, Bob Ross Neil. And you can also make tags. So I think after, hopefully after you import the Bob Ross, it automatically will be in here as one of your, as one of your sets. I think that's how it works. If not, you just make a new tag, you know, name the tag and then you can add stuff to it by right clicking on the brushes but I think it should automatically go into the thing anyway so with this texture brush here or not texture but this blender we can probably get something similar if you just kind of lightly push it up like that and then you want to go with the with the with the mountain so I'm going with the mountain like this and then I'm gonna just kind of do little circles here very barely even touching and you can see it kind of it kind of does a decent job there. It starts. It starts. It starts the work. That's kind of what we want there, um, but we we want we want more than that. So that's where the cloud brushes come in. So this is something I do a little different. I use a sky brush and paint storm to do this with. But let's go back to the Bob Ross brushes that I made, and we'll go to the large clouds here. You want to make it nice and big so it really covers this. Now, in this case, you want to use the color. So I'm going to right click and color pick here. I use my right click on my pin. It just makes it easy because I use it a lot. And we're just going to kind of just take the color of that cloud and just come right across here. And it kind of picks up some of the colors too, which is nice. And then that's how we kind of hide the cloud like he does. And it just blends right out, right in there. Just like a very, very light touch. I'm not actually trying to paint clouds in there. Just a very, very, very light touch. And now we have our cloud and it's kind of hidden in the 
in the mist, so to speak. And I would have, I would have made the you know, mountain come down a little bit further. Um, this was just brought up a little too high. So you want to make sure to paint your, paint your mount, mountain bigger than what you want it because you are going to have to paint back up into it and cover some of it. Right, so that's how you paint mountains. That's how you use the mountain tool. Um, of course, you, know, you, can, you can get really extravagant with your mountains or you can just do them very simple like Bob Ross and just stick to basic shapes and just follow along with them and just do exactly what he does. And that's how you use them. You're using it just like the knife. You're just pulling it down, pulling it down. All right, let's go to the next thing here. And this time I'm going to actually delete this and make a new layer. I'm going to start doing that every time now because, yeah, that just takes way too long. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to our paintbrush here. The next one I want to show you guys how to use is, let's do water because water is really fun. So I have a couple different ways to do water. Um, one is you can actually use the wet waterfall. This is good for waterfalls. This is good for water in general. There's the main water. And you can also, believe it or not, use the wet knife number two. The wet knife number one doesn't work so well. Um, let me see. I think this one, if I remember correctly, doesn't work so well for waterfalls. Actually, it does work. So you can use even this knife for waterfalls. And then you just want to lightly touch it. But it's more its more dry. So, it, I don't know, it doesn't feel like oil. And it doesn't, doesn't really feel like it's doing what it's supposed to for this particular thing. So I like using this knife. So this is one of the ways to do it, is using this knife here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. So let's say you're, you know, you're making your water and your water's flow. You can actually use this to even flow the water around. You come, well, where's the water going to come here? You'd go back over this again. And then, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to do that because you, anyway, you would, you would come back over that and then swoop. So just come across and then, and like that. And then we'll have one just come off like this. Now at first that, that looks pretty simple. So then what we want to do is you want to just lightly touch over. Because this is wet, a wet brush, it'll pick up the colors and just go right into it. As you can see. You want to leave you want to leave some there though. You don't want to you don't want to, you don't want to take it all away. So that's one way to do waterfalls. And of course you can draw the rock right here and so forth. Um what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of the like cyan blue because oftentimes that color picks up when he does his waterfalls because it's it's there in the under color that he you know that he has painted down already so when he adds white over it it's going right over that and it's blending that color so to simulate that you have to do do it like this now that color is underneath there a little bit and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you do the exact same way Bob Ross does it. So if you're wondering what's the technique I'm using, I'm using Bob Ross's technique. You just you have, you hold the paintbrush. I'm just gonna call this a paintbrush if that's cool. <laughs> and you c come across sideways. Now remember, this has tilt sensitivity. See that how it's how it's up and down, how it's sideways. That's important. Now, if you don't have tilt tilt, most good tablets have tilt now. But if for some reason you don't have tilt, you have to go in here in the settings. Like I said, go to the brush tip. And then you have to change, in this case, you're using a pattern. And so you have to change the rotation. Now, I think I have it already set to be sideways. If not, then I think the other one is. But anyway, I think 96 is sideways. But um, I guess I can go to rotation. I can just turn off rotation and see. Nope, 90 is up and down. OK, so I think if you just turn it all the way down like this, it's side there we go. OK, so all the way like that. And you can do the same thing. This is no, 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 have no tilt control right now. It does the exact same thing. It's just a little more of a pain in the butt when you have to go and alter that. Now for doing the trees, you're going to really want to have that tilt control, but you can still get away, get away with not having it. It's just, you have to keep it sideways. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, road, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go like this, switch this brush here, switch my brush back to my wet knife. And I have the wet knife with a little rake on it, and then I have the wet fan. And you can use the wet fan too, but I want to make sure that it's saved. Yeah, it did. Okay. And then you can use the you can use the wet fan. And the wet fan is just it's just backwards. The shape the pattern is backwards, but it pretty much does the same thing, as you can see there. And uh, sometimes I even like to add you know you can add more streaks in if you want to, or, or you know you don't have to work it as much as I work this or you can come back in with the you know with that darker blue 
and just kind of add a few strokes in here. You can also use a water brush and there's different brushes you can use. But you know you can keep it more like that. It's up to you. Um, another brush you can use for this. I don't think you can use this brush, the main water brush. Um, but you can add streaks back with this. This one's good to add streaks back, so I'm going to use a darker color here. And this is going with the direction of my stroke. So it's not actually pin, pin tilt. I mean, it looks like it's tilting, but whatever stroke I stroke with, that's what way it's going to stroke. So I don't know why that color, I used the wrong color. But anyway, you can go back in. You can add some dark lines like that. You can come in here. You can even add some white lines over that with this. This is another brush you can use for that. It's also good to, you can just do little fuzzies at the end here just by, by kind of little circles. I reckon make, making the brush a lot smaller than that. Not too small. And it's just little round circles and fuzzies. I like using the other brush for that though. I do want to show another thing you do with this water brush though. Um, so after you have it down here, let's say we have some dark shadows and things in the water here. And it's just, you know, whatever we have here. I don't know. We have some we're going to pull down some, I'm just going to pull down some artificial colors. So I'll act like we'll have some, some dark trees or something right here. I'm just going to pull those colors down. Then I'm going to pull some of that waterfall down like this. Boom. And now you can just take it, make it a little bit bigger. I like to leave it on the kind of whiter color and just kind of stroke it back and forth very lightly. And then you can go back and you can take your blue color. And you can just boom. You can have like instant water with the reflections in it. And this is the technique I use. Now another one I like to use for that too though. I go back and forth between using that one. And either using the wet fan. Uh, the wet knife. Number two. Uh, or the waterfall one. Works great too. Uh, this wet knife. Oh that's the backup one. Let me see if that. Let me see what this is. Oh yeah this is a. This is a different kind of knife. Um. This is good for making water come out and make little edges and stuff. And you can also take the texture off of this. To do that, you just go down here where it says pattern. You can just take the pattern and uncheck it. So it's very quick to change the brush to work different now. It's more smooth. You don't want to make it a lot, a lot smaller though, but just to get an idea like that. Now, now when you pull down though, you know it's going to be smooth like that, and that's not what you want. But for making these smooth lines, it's really good. Like for ocean, when I did the ocean waves, this was the brush I used right here, for a brush like that. So you can just come down the ocean wave like that, and then boom, it's really good for that. Or in the river, I just made some, you know, lines like this along the coast. And anyway, it's good for that. Let's go back here. I wanted to actually, I wanted to restore this brush. But the fastest way is just going like that, and then picking my brush again. So this very grainy. You can't really add you know, it's kind of a weird looking waterfall, but for something in the distance it might work. But we could use this to make the little splashes, just little circle motions and then kind of lift up with it too. But I don't really like it for that, but I'm just showing you different things you can do with these brushes. They're, they're very versatile. You can do a lot of things with these different brushes. By the way, what I've been using most of this time for this is my tree brush. Like this waterfall brush is the same thing. as It's just my tree brush with a different orientation, different direction, but it's the same brush. And I can also use this. I have to kind of turn sideways here and just lightly go across here and I can blend my water with that. You can also take it and um, another thing you can do, let's say I have the dark colors again. I'm going to pull those dark colors down like this. Just adding some, as if there was some sort of thing happening here. And then I'm going to add some more blue in here as well. Right now, let's say that's the thing. Now what we can do is you can go up here and go to uh, color rate and turn this all the way down. Now it's a blender. Now it's not having, it has no color to it now, it's just blending. And then you can go sideways and just lightly come across like this. And just lightly pull across here. And whatever reflections you had in there, you now have instant water. You can also just lightly pull this side, lightly pull that side. 
and bam. That kind of gives that nice look to it. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that like that for right now. Then you can take the water brush and add a little bit of white to it. And I like to start where there would actually be reflections and just lightly go across it. And you can also go out and blend that back out again too. Use the waterfall brush to kind of blend it. If I do it very lightly, it doesn't really add much to it. It's like a blender. And that's how you get nice water. Now this is the brush here. So this is the uh, wet waterfall. And you can use the wet waterfall or you can use the knife number two. Like I said, they're pretty much the same thing. This is orientated facing down the texture. I don't know if you can see that. Whereas the waterfall, I think, oops, is orientated facing up. Let me see. Now one's down too. Oh yeah, never mind. It's the, um, what I like to use for this is the, the wet fan. That one's orientated facing up. This is to draw certain kinds of trees as well. And bushes, you can just, just lightly push up. Anyway, lightly push up with this brush, just like a fan brush. Just lightly push up, so push up like that. And that's how you get that nice little, and then do little circles at the bottom, as if you're using the corner of a fan brush. And now you have that nice mist going on. Now you can you also use the, the cloud brush, the big cloud brush. Make it a little bit smaller here, and you can just kind of lightly add some mist coming up. Like so, this was the technique I used to do that waterfall you just saw. And that painting I showed in the beginning. Boom, like that. Okay, so I'm just trying to think of all the different things you can do with these brushes. And like I said, you really just think about what is Bob Ross doing and then kind of doing those things with it. All right, so we covered the clouds, we covered water, we covered mountain. Um, distant trees is important. So in Paintstorm, I, I have distant tree brush that's... Um, I could actually make it in credit too. I don't know why I didn't. But I like to paint them rather than, I don't know, it just feels like it's cheating. But I have a distant, I have a distant tree brush. And let's go ahead and I'm going to put that same kind of blue. Well, I'll do a little bit lighter blue, but. So I have, it's basically like a, a, it's a, it's a stamp tool. So it kind of stamps a bunch of trees, you know, just kind of stacks them next to each other with your pressure. So if you push smaller, they're, they're smaller trees, press harder, they're bigger trees. And you can just get a nice line of trees in the background and they're, and they're not too detailed and they're kind of like, they're kind of like pine trees. And that's, it's, to me, it feels like cheating. I do have that texture in here that comes with my pack. So if you want to make that brush, it's really easy. You just pick a brush that repeats patterns. And uh, anyway, I might make it for this pack, but what I like to use, because I like to do like Bob Ross, I like to actually feel like I'm painting like Bob Ross. And this is the technique I use in that waterfall painting. If you saw the really, really distant trees, this is the technique that I use for that. All I did was I took one of my, one of my knife brushes. So we'll take, we'll take this knife brush right here. And right now it's orientated this way. And so go to the settings here and I'm going to turn off rotation. And I'm going to go to the brush tip here. I'm going to turn it. Actually, let me see if it's, it should be, yeah, okay. It's already, it's already this one's already orientated to be straight up and down. And I don't like pen tilt on when I want to do this. I want it to be straight up and down. It's just easier this way. We'll pick a nice dark kind of blue color. And let's say I have a ridge here in the background. And so I would just lightly push like up and down the exact same way I would if I was using his technique with oil brushes. So I'm just kind of pushing up and down like this. And because of the slight angle this brush has, it's not perfectly sharp and down, it adds that nice texture at the end of each of those trees. And I just kind of go up and down and just vary my pressure. And I can get smaller. And I can add some more. And in between, it it's really the same technique as if you were following Bob Ross and doing like so. So that's what that's pretty much the same technique. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that if you can kind of see. And it kind of looks very similar too to to what Bob Ross gets. I like to vary them. So there's some small ones or some bigger ones. Kind of looks like a four. Some are lighter, some are darker. I like to make the bigger ones darker. So I like to go across all the big ones and just kind of make them darker. That way there's like some depth. You can also do two layers if you want to. 
And as you can do one layer of lighter ones and one layer of darker ones on two different layers, and that will give you that kind of depth as well. Now the same thing here, you want to kind of fade these out. Now you can actually use this brush here and just lightly pull, you know, just kind of push back and forth in, in little circle motions. Now just in case, I don't, and then you can go back over that if that's not blended enough into your painting, you can go back over to the cloud brush. The same thing with the, I did with the mountains. And I'll go ahead and just show that really fast here. Actually, let's use the water brush this time. Let's do something a little different. Using the exact same color, and just kind of blending this. Little circle motions. And then we can just kind of blend that out. And then you can actually turn off the colors, what I should have done. Or I should have used it. I should have used the color, whatever I'm blending into. Don't really think about that. Let me just go do that again. And that's another if you want more texture to it. And you can also, like I said, you can also mystify it with the clouds because that's usually what he does. He usually adds a little bit of mist, a little bit of fog. So in that case, this is the, the big cloud brush. And you just use that same color as whatever the background is you're working on. So in this case, I'm using the sky color. And I always like to start with that first because that's, you know, his always blends with, like I said, it blends with whatever his colors underneath and it usually has like a blue so the white's blending with that blue especially if he's using the black canvas and then he'll add just a little bit of oh, i'll add a little bit of white just to kind of add some of that toward you know some of that lightness in there and also this helps you get a light feel and then if you want to you can use the cloud blender here and you can just kind of blend some of this off you can also use the other blender i showed you in, in the in the paint section That kind of just fades, fades them. And if you want to blend it even more, like I said, you can go to the paint section here. Paint. Scroll down here to the uh, Blender Texture Soft, and you can just kind of pull this around in little circles and kind of pull lift up into the trees, like so. Then pull little circles down here in the bottom. Got to zoom in so you can see that. And that would be way off in the distance in the background. So it looks like, like like trees way off in the background. And so I like using that technique. And I just want to really quickly go over that technique one more time. Just I, I, don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if I explained it. I just realized I kind of went there kind of fast. So again, you're using a knife brush. In this case, I can go here and take off the um, rota rotation. Yeah, take off the rotation. So that way it's just by itself. And when you do this, the way you want to do it is you want to just, just like lightly, I don't know if you can see this, lightly push up, boom, 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 up and down. So I'm kind of like, I'm not, when I push up, I'm letting the pressure off. So I'm pushing pressure as I go up. When I go back down to do the next one and moving over, I'm letting the pressure off. So I'm going up. So I'm only putting pressure on the upstrokes. Boom, 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 boom. And that's how you get that that tree line. So it looks like I'm just scribbling right now. It looks like I'm just going up and down like this. But that gives a very different look. Now you can actually get away with that um, if you get used to like when to hit hard on the upstroke, but it doesn't quite look the same. Instead, I'm only pushing on the upstroke. Upstroke. So even though it looks like I'm scribbling up and down, I'm only putting pressure when I'm going up. And then I like to stay in one spot for a second to get those bigger ones and go back over this. Maybe get a bigger one there, some smaller ones. You like to vary the size of the tree line so they don't all look the same, like that. Now, if you want to add more texture or more, you know, that's all Bob Ross does. If you want to add more to them, um, like one, you could you could use a stamp tool. I think that's kind of like not really painting. You're, you're kind of not getting the joy of painting. But you can turn this, this uh, brush down now in this case, I like to have pen tilt on. Again, if you don't have pen tilt, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to turn this each time to the angle you want it. You might have to make two brushes with different with different angles on them. That is, you have to go here, have one with like a um, I don't know a zero degree, and another one with like a 45 degree or something like that. So that way you have two angles, and like one sideways and two angle brushes, and one up and one up. So you have to have like four different brushes of the same brush. That way you can hit those different angles when you need them. But if you have rotation, it makes it so much easier because now I can just rotate my brush whatever angle I want it. 
And so now I can come here and in the background I can add this, you know, like diagonal little textures like that. I want to make the brush a little bit smaller. And this is going to add those little textures. Now, another thing you can do is you can keep it sideways. So if you want to, uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you this as if I didn't have, um, if you don't have rotation. I just want to show you how I would do that. No rotation. Let's go and turn this down to zero for rotation. That way it's sideways. Sorry, I think I said that too fast. Right here where it says rotation, just put that down to zero. I just slide it down to zero there. Make sure my brush is small enough. And I'm just going to kind of start up at the top and go back and forth. And I'm a, I kind of like, it's almost like a, it's not, you're not just scribbling back and forth like this. It's almost like you're doing a half moon, upside down half moon. So imagine the half moon looks like this. That's the shape I'm tracing. And let me show you the shape. So I'm tracing a shape like this. Right, that's the shape I'm, I'm going in. And I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of rocking back and forth. And I'm only stroking I'm, when I lift my pin up. I'm not stroking. I'm stroking when I lift my pin down. And if you just do that to to a few of the trees in the background, you can get that look. This is another technique people use in oil paintings as well, by the way, for background pine trees. What they'll do is for background pine trees, they might, you know, add a couple strokes, some upstrokes like that, and then they'll come in and they'll do this right here. I'm, I'm going to exaggerate it big, kind of like that. But with, you know, with the uh, brush, it's a little different the way it works. Um, if I keep it, actually, you know, let me show you. I'll zoom in. I'll make the brush big enough so it's, it, it kind of fits the scale what I'm trying to show you. And so they'll just kind of You know, like that, or you can, or you can kind of get more like so, and then just add a few more in there. And now you got that kind of texture in the background. And the way in the background, it looks really cool. Um, with with the traditional brush, I have to say it looks a lot cooler, but that's all right. You can also use the oil brush for way in the background. So this is my main paintbrush. This is what I painted that entire guy with right here. This brush, sorry. So let's make it small enough here. And you can just kind of go in the background and just kind of do that kind of same thing. And this looks, this looks, I'm going to get darker and lighter in some parts. This right here looks more like how it should look if I were using a, like a paintbrush. But just add a little bit of back and forth. You know, you don't need much, just a little bit. You can also make this a thinner brush. So I think you can do that by rotating or, oh, I thought there was a way to change the shape of this. This is the shape I'm using, this kind of diamond shape. I think there might be under under this right here, if you use the um, circle, let's see here, you got, so that's the, oh that's, yeah, that's the ratio, Look, you can make it really thin and then you can turn it so you can change the angle. So let's say I want it to be sideways, boom, like that. And so now, oh, I got pin rotation on right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. It works really good for oil painting, that's why I have it on. Okay, so now I got this perfect brush for this now. Check this out. And you can change the, you know, the thickness of it as you need. Just add a little bit of texture. And I'm sorry this is if this is boring. That I'm going, I'm just making sure, I'm trying to make sure I cover everything because um, it's really important that each brush you understand how to do it and the technique behind it, especially if you don't have any traditional painting. Another thing I might do too, um, again, if you don't have the tilt, you might want to bring that back to 96, 92, or is it 90? I think 90 is the perfect up and down. You can hit these little buttons right here. And you can add a straight line like that. And that would be like for trees that aren't so far in the distance, or if you just want to have a little more detail in your painting. And that's really cool for that. So, all right, so that's how to do the distant trees. Now, what if you want to do trees that are more close up? Now, let me show you one thing here. These are all done using the same knife brush. I do all these with the, it's basically as if I was using a knife to do these. Uh, actually, I do use um, one of my other tree brushes in some of these trees. I'll show you in a second. Let's go to my paintings here. 
and I actually did this as a demonstration just to show the different kind of trees you can do with the Bob Ross style. So all this one here, this willow tree, and these are all done for imagination. So uh, hopefully I remember what these trees kind of look like. I don't even know what kind of tree that is. It's like a stocked standard tree. That one I didn't, I didn't use. I used a different brush for that. And the bushes, I'll show you that brush in a second. But this brush, I used the knife. Knife, 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 knife. Knife for a lot of this. But then I um, had to use some other brushes too to get that birch tree to look like a birch tree. This took a lot more work. And this is a little bit outside of the Bob Ross speed painting thing. But it's still using the same techniques. It's just having to take a little more time, a little more layers to get it to look that way. But these trees and stuff are really fast. This bush is really fast. But this tree here is just downward slope motions, of, you know, the dark color, then a couple lighter colors on top of it. And then bam, you have the tree. And this tree here is really cool. This is a two different kinds of trees using the same brush, just in, in a slightly different way and different orientation. Um, but yeah, so you can actually, mess around with changing the angle of it. You can make it, you can even make them go upwards by just flipping it around. And I think that one you would use the, yeah, the fan, or you make them go down or up, um, depending on which one you use. Okay, so, what, what I'm talking about is, if you look at my, oh, you can also use this brush here. This one's kind of weird to make trees with, but you'd use the same kind of seesaw motion and then you can get like a kind of a weird tree with it I don't know I don't I don't really like using it for trees you need pin rotation for it to really work I'll show you what I'm talking about if you if you add pin rotation on for it and then have tilt direction so as I'm tilting it then I can go like a slight angle like this and kind of push it up and I can come over this side and then I can kind of rock it. I'm, I'm doing my wrist in a slight C curve. So the curve that I'm going is, is like this. I'm following a curve like that. I'm just doing them quickly. You can also do this, do this same technique with the other brushes. Now this side is a little bit harder to do that same curve. So I'd want to, I'd want, I'd want to actually turn my monitor because I can't do it this way. So it like I want to like turn my canvas, but anyway, it gets kind of a cool look to it, and then you can add a lighter, lighter color to it. Let's say it's some snow. Have it just build up little parts. You can even pull it sideways. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so that's that. Like I said, I don't really like using that for trees but I just want to show that you could use it for that. I typically use it for like water lines and things like that. All right, let's go back to my brushes here. So when, if you notice the shape right here, see the, how it's shaped? I'm going to kind of mark a, little, mark a little mark so you can see that one's, that's facing down. See the, the actual shape itself. So this one, if you do the trees back and forth like this and kind of do this, I like to do this kind of seesaw. This is like a regular pine tree where the, blades are all kind of facing down as you can see and you can actually do these trees without without having the rotation because I usually just keep it sideways anyway and I'll, I'll show that's just a technique right now I'll show you how to do the actual trees in a second how you can use this to paint the trees this is a really long lesson ah, not enough undos so instead we're just gonna go like that and start over Besides, I'm going to add my sky color back in here. That's a bright sky. Okay. So that one's facing down. And if you look at some of these ones, this one is also facing down. I think I have one that I purposely made facing up. Yeah, okay, that one's facing up. So notice if I draw with this one, it's facing out to make it a little bigger. It's facing upwards. See the texture is facing up. This is good for, you know, doing the top rounded. And this is where you want pen tilt because this would be really just almost impossible to make that rounded shape like that. So I'm I'm rotating my arm around. That would be almost impossible because it's it's changing its shape 
as I'm moving around to get the points going out like that. And that's really good for the top parts of like bushes and trees. To do that without pen tilt would be ridiculously hard. You would have to uh, have like three different brushes and different angles, and even then it still wouldn't be quite right. But what's good about this is if you do the same kind of tree with this, um, let's say I'm doing a pine tree, I'm doing my same technique. What happens now is all the pine, the pine needles are now facing upwards. And then I would just add a few sticking out like this. And I'll show you the difference here in just a second between the two. And then you have to make the brush a little bit smaller and work that kind of seesaw motion back and forth and have a couple, oops, hit the wrong button. Oh crap, what did I do? Okay, change the colors what I did. Now I'm just kind of pulling those like that. You can only go so far and you gotta change the size one more time and just have a few little sticking out like that. Anyway, so this, the all the, I don't know if you can see that, but all the bristles kind of, almost kind of point upwards and it really does change the way it looks. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of snow to this so you can see what I'm talking about here. If I kind of, you want to kind of lift up when you when you push it too, and then you kind of follow the direction of each branch. And notice that as I'm lifting upwards on each branch like that, it kind of has a curve up like that. So it kind of makes the pine needles look like they're curving upwards instead of downwards. And it really does change the way the tree looks when you paint it with this orientation versus the other orientation. Right, so that's the basic idea. Now, that I know that tree doesn't look great, that's fine. I just wanted to show you the difference and I probably should have maybe took my time more to demonstrate that versus the one that faces down, which is this one. Now it's facing down. So now let's talk about the technique. So the, the way my hand is moving is kind of like a seesaw motion. I'm kind of, I'm keeping it sideways, I'm, I'm, but I'm coming down and down and down, kind of like making an S like that, but I'm keeping it kind of close together. And just I'm just rocking it back and forth like this. And I'm only pushing, I'm lifting up, I'm not pushing. I'm pushing, lifting up, pushing. I lift up every time when I hit the edge. Because if you don't lift up and just go like this, it makes that weird, see, that's not sharp. If you do this like that and don't lift up, it the, the corners don't look right. So instead you want to push it, lift up. Come back, push it, lift up, push it, lift up. So you want to lift up each time you come to the end. And that's important. I'll do it real slow motion. Pushing, 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 lift up. Pushing, 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 lift up. That's what I'm doing, but very quickly. It takes a little practice. You'll get the hang of it, though. Boom, 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 like that. That's how I get the middle of the tree. Then to get the, and then sometimes I'll, I'll, like I've, I'll just kind of push downward, so like this. I'm just kind of rocking and pushing it down. So it's like back and forth and down. And that creates that kind of bladed look that you get in the center of a, a Christmas tree. Certain types of fir trees and pine trees. And I like to just go down and add a few of those. Make sure there's some gaps and spaces between them as well. And then I'm going to come and just kind of add a few back and forth here. So I like to work on one side at a time. See now notice the the pines or the blades are facing, see these ones are facing up, these ones are facing down. So you can get a slightly different look to your tree by which brush you use. And then I need to change the size of my brush as I come up here. I'm going to add just a couple. You can make it thinner or thicker. You know, that is more leaves, less leaves. You know, that is, you can add more or less space in between these branches. So, like these branches right here. So, this is the space right there. If you want to, you can, you, know, you can make them a lot, a lot more space between them. You know, like that, that's a lot more space. You can, Right, so it's up to you how much space you want. 
Right now, after you have a dark color, I like using a dark blue or a really dark um, brown color, kind of reddish brown to go underneath your trees. Um, then you want to reduce it again. You got to, you know, get the, get the same technique. And after you get good at it, you can get it really fast. Then you want to use the oil brush. I like to use the oil brush. And I like to get this top part right here. Bam. Done. Go back to the wet knife brush here. And then let's say we want kind of a green tree. So I'm going to add some green here. Never use like a bright green. You always want to be desaturated a little bit. Never like too bright. Otherwise it looks weird. Start out kind of kind of dark. Now here I'm going to push down. So I'm using that technique where I'm seesawing and I'm pushing down to get that kind of bladed look into the tree. And then I'm pu pushing off to the side here on some of them. And I'm mainly only working on the side that I want the light coming from. So in this case, the light's coming from the right-hand side. Notice I'm leaving space between each of these like, like they have in nature. And, and remember, you're trying to just give a, a representation of the tree. You're not trying to actually draw like a photographic tree here. And you know, Bob Ross was all about just very, very simple, simplified trees. Everything was simplified, very simple thing that anyone could learn how to do. I might add just a little bit of this kind of brown yellow in here. Just to add, I don't know, maybe the tree's kind of dying or something. It's, just, it's kind of cool. I like adding different colors. And then we're going to add kind of a purple color. So, and in this case, I'm just going to go toward purple. I'm not going to be purple. I'm just going to be in the red area, but go really desaturated. And believe it or not, like almost gray. And it will kind of look purplish when it's on this side. And this is just to get rid of all of that blue. Not get rid of all of it. You want to leave some of it. You want some of that dark left behind. I don't know if I use a dark, dark enough blue anyway. But adding a little bit of those colors in between, and then bam, now you have a tree. And if you wanted some slightly brighter colors, you can you can go back to like the kind of almost like a green, green yellow, and just add a few more more toward the top of the tree. I have to reduce my size here. I'm doing this very, very quickly. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I don't want it to, it's already gone on so long. I didn't realize there's so much to the technique. I mean, like I said, I got tr traditional uh, painting. So it's, for me, it's, it's just a matter of, I'm just translating all that, but I'm just assuming that you guys don't have that traditional knowledge. Anyway, so that's just, you know, and from a distance, you can see, very cool. That's a cool tree. Uh, and he even does that for trees that are up close. I mean, it's, that's the whole point. It's, his paintings are very loose. And you can even, you know, do paintings with an oil brush if you want, or do these trees with the oil brush. I mean, if it all depends on how you want the trees to look. You can get a, you can get an interesting look with the oil brush here. You can also turn it down a little bit, um, you know, get it, oops, get it more, uh, I'll do kind of a dark brown color this time. Same kind of technique where you're going back and forth and then you just kind of this is probably a little too thick of a brush but um, yeah that's a, that's a little too thick of a brush to get the, to get the idea but you could you could do it, um, probably not going to be able to do it as, as fast. It would be more of like traditional, just painting in general. Oh, you know what I could do, though? Let's go back to, let's turn off the, road. Uh, I'll leave rotation on. Let's go back to the brush tip, though. Let's go, let's go to this brush tip here. I'm going to make it maybe a little bit, a little bit wider. About like that. And then I can go back and forth. I'm going to kind of fill in the middle here. Okay. And I, I could have I could have made it a little bit thinner. But anyway, you get the idea. It kind of it kind of works. 
I had to make that a little bit thinner and I think it would work fine. And I can just add just a few I said, you know, this is a different style here, but anyway, get the idea. Just a few little things in there and then uh go towards blue. Make it gray. Just adding a little bit of detail on this side. Right, now you have a very different kind of tree that's more almost cartoonish in a way, but uh, can have its own use, uses, like for, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I just want to show you how to do that. Okay, so now let's quickly use this brush because I did want to show bushes and stuff like that too. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that, make a new layer. Don't worry, just about covered everything you think you need to know to start getting your Bob Ross on. It's so enjoyable, it really is. Like to paint like Bob Ross digitally, and to paint like Bob Ross, even with real paints, it's just it is it is the joy of painting. It's just so loose and just fun. And then and sometimes I'll add my own techniques in there, you know, get a little more toward the realism, but still abstract and uh, but still fun and fast. I, I don't like painting for a long time. Uh, like that midnight painting, I only, the, in real time, that only took me an hour and 20 minutes. That waterfall painting I showed at the beginning, the the dark one, that only took me an hour and 20 minutes real time. So it's once you get it down, it's 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 awesome. Yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit takes a little bit longer than you know than Bob Ross's 30 minutes, but you know you have to do things a little differently. All right, let's just go back to our knife again because this knife is it's really versatile, or or a fan brush, it's really the same thing. Let's start with a dark blue color here almost black and I'm going to do the orientation. I'm going to change the orientation of the brush right now. It's like this. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go to take, uh, actually I don't want rotation off. I do want to go to the, I think I just turned this down if I remember correctly. Yeah, now it's up and down. Okay, now once it's up and down, I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of push up like this. And I'm going to kind of come at a slight angle. This is where you kind of, to do this push, you kind of need the pin rotation because I'm going to keep rotating as, I come, as I'm coming down. To do this without pin rotation would be pretty much impossible. You can also get almost like a feather look with this. It almost looks like a feather. And I don't know if you know these bushes. I can't remember what they're called. But I see them a lot. What made me think of doing this bush with this brush was I, I saw this, I saw, I've seen a lot of these bushes on Bob Ross, oh, not Bob Ross, on Bob's Burger, Bob's Burger. And bam, look at that, beautiful little tree, happy little tree right there, just, you know what, happy little, happy little bush needs a friend. <laughs> yeah, happy little friend right there, you know, needs a place for all the little nature friends to have fun. You know, little squirrels and everything. You know, I have some raccoons uh, that come up in my backyard and they, I leave some cat food. I don't know if that's good for them or not, but I leave some cat food out there for them and they come up and they eat and we watch them right here through a big window. It's really cool. I haven't, I haven't went as far as like bringing the, the wild animals into my house like Bob Ross does, but I do like them out there. They're pretty cool. I'm going to add a little more, a couple more little branches coming off here. Right, so you always want to start with a dark color, and then, and this is pretty much true for any type of painting that you're doing. Start with the dark color, and then, then you work your way up to your next darkest color, and then you're finding your lightest color. So in this case, we want it to be a green bush, so we're going to get kind of a desaturated green here. More leaning toward the uh, blue side of things. Let's see how dark that is. That's... Can go a little bit darker, and up here you have these three sliders. I'm just gonna pull that slider, and that makes it a little bit darker. It's just easier to do than than having to adjust it the other way. I want my light coming from the right hand side again. I favor that for whatever reason. But I can do it up to the left; doesn't matter to me. But I just I don't know. I favor light coming from the right side for some reason. I always have ever since I've been drawing. Now on this side I'm going to add a, add a lot fewer strokes on this side, just a little bit. And if you want to get more painterly with it, and by painterly I mean like really kind of, I guess, almost impressionistic with your colors. 
is you can go with the shadow color and make the shadow color a really like grayish like purple color so I'm gonna pick this color right here it's a very very gray purple color and just add a few strokes to the dark side I'm gonna leave some of that dark dark color though like that boom that adds a more painterly look to it and then I'm gonna go for my greener green that, that's going more toward the yellow on the color wheel and we're right in the middle so like a nice middle color you don't want it too bright and we're just gonna add a few strokes you want to leave some of that mid-tone in between and some of those dark tones showing as well when I get toward the bottom I let off a little bit the light might reach over a little bit on this side make sure to leave that space in between when you get toward the bottom you know don't really have any maybe a little bit here and there right along the edge here but not much you don't want much, you don't want too much on the bottom and also keep in mind the you know this tree's kind of blocking the light a bit now finally I might go more a little bit more towards the yellow and just a little bit brighter and toward the white and I'd say it's a really nice sunny day I'm add just a little bit of strokes just a couple you don't want to overdo this just takes a few little strokes and bam now you got your cool little bushes and look how fast that was now I I'm teaching and talking the entire time if I just bust out a bush I mean we can bust these bushes out really really fast once you get this down and get the hang of it you know we'll just do a small one here I'm not going to change the shape the size of my brush which I usually would do I'll make this one a little bit more wild give a little more character here add a little bit of ground well, I'll try to leave a little more of that blue this time and then we'll go a little bit brighter especially toward the top and finally a little bit brighter and whiter I could have fleshed that out on this side a little bit more I'll do that right now boom and there you go done got another bush now you know if you take you know doing it that fast you know it's you're gonna if that's a more distant bush if I have more in the front I'm take my time a little bit more in, in but you know not talking I would have done those a little bit faster but get the idea and I use those slightly different colors too and you can do all kinds of, you can do like bushes with this thing um, let's go back to its default here by just picking whatever brush here and then let's go back here and do this uh, That's now it's this is the fan brush, which is or, the bristles are orientated upwards. Never just do like a dark green. Uh, if your if your bush is green, make your base be like either a dark kind of purple or a dark brown. You can even make it more muted, but not quite black. Like you can go to black, and then on my color wheel, I'm gonna go to like blue or let's this time let's go kind of to like a like a brown, so in between orange and red, or yeah, between orange and red. And then I'm going to kind of move it a little bit this way, like that. So it's it's kind of still saying saturated. I'm gonna move it a little bit this way. Okay, it's not working. There we go. And so now when I do this bush, let's say this is where you need the pin tilt too. You just kind of push up and out like this to get the end of the bushes. I'm gonna show you other ways to do bushes too. I have some really cool that simulate um Bob Ross's style of bushes. This is more of a fan brush style. And it's kind of like more like grassy kind of. You can also use this for grass too, but like that there. And then you'd want to take your kind of greenish color here, darker and more desaturated. Just adding a few little places here and I'm leaving some of that dark color underneath I don't want to totally get rid of that and I also want some of this though to kind of stick out up and past like so and then I'm gonna finally go 
towards my brighter I'm a little bit toward white which is also cons is desaturated by the way and boom like that now you got this kind of cool cool little bush and voila okay now let me go ahead and look through the things here make sure I haven't missed anything so the the dry this is a dry brush um, this is good you know to draw like rocks and things like that um, you can also use the the mount the mountain texture one here the Neil Mountain and you can use this to make rocks as well so you can start with a dark color just kind of block in your color here for the rock maybe another rock right there and then you can take your kind of grayish color here Actually, I'm going to just kind of go toward, there we go, like that. And you can actually leave some of that texture on there so you don't have to totally get rid of it. That's for like bigger rocks that are more textured. And it's just like Bob Ross. I mean, look at that. Boom, you're done. It's just like that. Now, you know when he makes bushes with the corner of his two-inch brush? We can do that too. I have a couple different ways to do it. I have the, the abstract tree brush. I have the leafy brush. And I have one more of the bush, I believe, the Neil style bush. That's like for really kind of fuzzy, cool bushes. Let's start with this with this abstract one. Now this is good for trees as well. So let's say we wanted to do a tree, and this is going to be the upward parts of the tree. You know how he'll he'll kind of draw a couple thick branches in there, and then do the dark color. So he'll do the dark color first, and use this kind of a dark brown, almost black. There's a little bit of brown in there, so that way when he puts out the colors, it brings out that brown and mixes in with it. So you want to just do little circles and just kind of, you know, make the shape, leave leave enough space. You want some space, you want some sky to show through, so you don't want it to be totally dark. And let's say that would be like that top part of the tree, whatever, that he's doing. Because it would be covered by the things. I just want to show you it really fast. And then let's say it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a green tree. Now let's say it's more of a kind of a brownish yellow tree. So it's got some browns and yellows in there. So you have the nice, the next color you want to, this one you just want to be, come outside of your dark color here. So you want to come outside of that. I probably could, you know what, I should have used a lighter color behind it. Oh well. Make sure there's more of this on the, I'm just kind of, almost tapping sometimes like this just to get that it automatically rocks around and moves around little air in different it changes orientation you want to make sure that you have some of that dark color shining through still you don't want to completely get rid of that and this is when he just takes the edge of his you know the corner of his two inch brush and he just kind of goes like this you know he just goes like this he goes boom like that just kind of pushes out that same technique is kind of what we're simulating here and you can see it gives a really very similar look and it's, it's very airy and spacey like it, like the brushes and it, those trees don't look like terribly awesome you know when he does I mean they look cool in the painting but they're very very abstract they're not realistic looking at all but that's not the point they're, they're Bob Ross trees they're awesome we all love Bob Bob Ross's trees now we're going to do a little bit of yellow. We can also add some red in there. Just a little little couple hints of red. Because this is where his other color would have picked up some of that anyway. It would have picked up some of the red within his dark brown red color. So we have to kind of simulate that. Because we can't, can't do that yet in paint programs, unfortunately. I'm going to add more of this light color on this side. But as you can see, boom, that could be a tree. And then, you know, you can draw the branches in afterwards, draw them beforehand. One thing good about digital is you can kind of cheat. You can use two layers. Um, so you can have, I mean, I've been only using one layer, but you can cheat and use two layers and have the branches on one layer, then the tree on top of another layer. And that really can help you out there. Let's get back to that dark brown color here. I'm just going to kind of add a few of these branches in between now typically he'll he'll just add them um, like so then we can come down here let's say this is the big 
trunk coming off here. Now here's where you can use the rock um, tool or the the knife tool as well. But I think the rock mountain works better for this for texture. And you just lightly rub it down one side, boom, and you already got your texture, just very, very lightly. And then take the dark color and just kind of etch in to make some shapes like that. And then if you want to, you can even add a little bit of like grayish for the side, for the shadow side, boom. Almost like you're, almost like you're doing, kind of zoom in for you can see what I'm talking about here has that texture right there. And that's it. That's like Bob Ross style tree. I mean, honestly, it's it's amazing how how much it kind of resembles it. Okay, now we got the two other types of bushes we can do. The leafy one. This one I like a lot and I like to mix them together and get a really cool look that way as well. I don't know why I'm looking here. I should be looking here. <laughs> okay, so with this here, we'll start with the kind of a brownish, dark brownish red, dark red, yeah, as our base. And again, little small circles, kind of like the cloud brush, very similar to how we're using the cloud brush here. So light, again, this is for a bush, so we don't want much showing through. This is where everything gets darker. It's a thick bush, so there's nothing, only at the top do you let some things show through. Everything else is pretty dark like that. And then you want to take a green color, let's say, say it's a green bush. I'm going to start leaning toward the blue side of things though and desaturate it in dark. And we're just going to lay in a few of this and let some of these kind of stick out of the top as well like that. Leave some of that dark. You don't want to get rid of all your darks. Just a little bit of that like that and then finally a little more green and we're just going to kind of lightly touch just add a few like so. Now one thing you'll notice about this one is it's very leafy looking. You see that? It actually looks like little leaves, almost like there's no way you can get that look with Bob Ross. It's almost like cheating in a way. And so what I like to do is to use the abstract brush or I like to use my Neil style bushes and just lightly come in here and just get rid of some of that texture and voila. You can also um, use a mixture of that and this brush as well to do your bushes to look more like Bob Ross. So in that case you would take the leafy brush again, take this dark color and we'll just kind of bring that back really fast. This isn't quite as dark but it's fine. And I would kind of go like that, whatever, and then I would take a slightly lighter color and just kind of lightly add some of that on the tops, like so. And then also if you just lightly blend in little circles with this, you can actually get rid of a lot of that leafy look anyway. And then you can go ahead and take the Bob Ross two-inch brush, that's what I should call it, huh? two-inch brush. Anyway, bushes. I'm going to kind of pick this color up and just add that right around on it like that. You can also, you know, make the dark layer with the one brush. I'm going to go toward yellow now. You can make the dark layer with one brush and then with this brush make the lighter or mid-tone green and get kind of a mixture that way. Anyway, now you can see it got rid of that look and looks more like, you know, the paint dabs. You can also try different textures. You can download different ABR textures um, and try those out and, and with the brush. So you can take the same brush and all you have to do is go in here and go into your textures down here where it says texture, open that up and then pattern. And you have to actually click OK on the pattern. No, wait, that's, sorry, not texture, my bad. You can actually add texture to the leaf brush and it will change how it looks though but it makes it harder to paint with. What I meant is go to the brush tip. And then I have all these textures that you'll you'll get with the uh, with the uh, bundle that comes for this program. And you could try different textures. You, know, you can try like that texture. You can try that texture for example. You can change the you know the spacing 
and you know just just you know mess around see what can you get you know this is kind of more splatty looking I don't, I don't really like that at all and I'm not worried about worried about saving this because it's it's going to if you find the one that you really like you can save it but or just memorize what it is that one's really like too yucky it looks nothing it looks like just paint dabs I mean people that paint brushes or do I, I don't know it looks so ugly it looks so like like Microsoft paint <laughs> this looks horrible um trying to find I know let me see if this one works whoa it's huge Let's turn that baby down. So this one is interesting. Let's add some dark back in there. So that's good just to add some quick texture back into it. See that? It's kind of, I don't know, almost too something. I'm trying to think what I can do to, we can also, we can maybe make it a little more dense. See if that helps. Go around little circles. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of those like distinguishing like circle shapes, but I mean it kind of works. Let me see here. Try to go back with the. That'd be good for like um. Those what are those things that tumbleweeds? Let me try. Uh, what can I do? I'm just trying to show you some things you can do here. Like you can do scatter, for example. And then. Uh, let's see, how come it's not showing me? Oh, scatter strength, there it is. So instead of it being like that, you can kind of scatter it around. And then I think you can also do fuzzy, fuzzy dab. And I think that will make it change. It still not, it still doesn't change much though. I was just going to see if it helped at all. Like, get rid of that kind of round. Anyway, that's pretty good for certain things. So that's a good texture to keep in mind. So another brush tip um, you can use is, I know I messed around with quite a few of these, and there's a couple that were pretty cool too. I was going to save them as brushes, but I didn't. You can also find different textures, like I said, online. I think something like this one here. Yeah. Might be a little bit too... Uh, it's almost too splatty, so I think I'd have to go back in here and take off the scatter. I'm just trying to test this out. There we go. So this one, if you just kind of dab it here and there, definitely stylized, but you can see, you know, it kind of has that. Yeah, it's, you know, you can add that on top of something, just add a little more a little more difference. It's more like dots though. Anyway, so I like the brushes that I came up with. Finally, I'll show you what a stylized bush looks like with my brush. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this all together, make a new layer. And I'm going to do a much lighter, lighter blue this time. Okay, so my style Oops, make sure you click the paintbrush. Stylize bushes. So let's start with a dark color here. I do a dark blue this time. I know it kind of it's just, it's kind of an interesting. I, I like this bush. I like the way they look. This would be really cool, I think, for like anime and stuff like that, or just background for anime. It'd be really cool. See, it has that kind of interesting texture to it and then I'm going to go ahead and do let's do, let's, let's do a green bush I guess so this one's really hard to leave space so um, I have to like reduce the size so adds a, it's a little more work involved than the Bob Ross you know style but ends up looking pretty cool and then finally we can add some more just final little highlight areas here. Like so. 
And that one has a really cool texture to it. I can actually bring some of that color outside like that so it's outside of the darkness of the bush so it's almost like light shining through that part. And from a distance you can see that looks really cool. That would be like from normal normal distance or so. And so those are really nice. So you can actually like you can mix these different brushes together to get really cool really cool effects. Um, lastly, like so I showed rocks and things like that, cliffs, you can do the same way as you do um, mountains. So you can lay in the dark color first. Let's see, you have like a cliff here, and this is going to be the cliff for like, I don't know, a waterfall or something. You can also change the shape to round if that helps you doing when you're painting rocks. So like that. And then uh, we'll take our textured brush now. And you just kind of, that's not great enough. There we go. And then you can go back in with the dark if you want to and kind of just dab around, add some more texture. But you get the idea. Right? And that would be like a little kind of like cliff side or something. You can add more. And try to make more of like a step right there, kind of sloping down. Right, so that's that's the brush to use for that. Works really good. If you want, you can you can hit that with a final like little, just a little bit of highlights here. This is also a good brush to use with. I uh, was too many for like mud and things like that. So dirt. So let's say you have this really dark color first, and you want to lay down your dirt path. And uh, I think that I'm gonna go a little bit add a little bit of blue into that. And then back to red here. I'm just trying to make it a nice dark, almost black color. I'm going to add a little black to that color here. Okay, there we go. And then you would offset it with a very desaturated brownish kind of color. And you can just lightly just kind of push a couple times. Let me kind of zoom in so you can see that. So you see the texture? It's a, it's like you know it works very like like oils. If you keep smearing it, you know it's going to smear like oils. So you got to be careful, like like you're using the knife and you're just pulling a couple times, and then maybe even a lighter color where the, a couple little highlights are going to be like that. And you have all this like infinite detail in that little bit of mud path there. Oh yeah, and then finally, make sure I didn't miss any brushes here. I think I missed one brush. And that's the stamp tool. So finally we can add some grass. And this is just a stamp tool, so it and right now it only goes in this one direction. And this is like stamping basically like a like a black and white image of grass, but whatever color you want it to be. And it, I, I this I don't know, to me this sometimes feels like cheating. And sometimes these look these look really bad. But this one actually looks really good. It's very subtle. And the way I have it set up is it kind of scatters a little bit, so it kind of blends and blurs it, so it doesn't look like a like a black and white photo turned color or whatever. But anyway, you can um, add that to. You can also put tilt onto this, so you can get like perspective, and that's easy to do. You just go to rotation, and then make sure to choose tilt direction. Make sure nothing else is chosen. And so now I can actually tilt this thing. And just add grass along the edge here. And this side here is going to be a little bit weird, but I'll try it anyway. <laughs> this is really hard to paint like this. I could alter the direction of this thing if I wanted to, but oh well. Just add a few. That's way too bright, but anyway, get the idea. Whoa, I don't know how I misjudged that one. Go back in with that dark color. Just 
kind of mix it up. Anyway, you get the you get the idea, right? Okay. And so yeah, that's that's a long video, but that shows you how to use all the brushes. Now, in Paintstorm, it pretty much works the same way. And I'm just going to show you the few. I'm not going to go all the way through everything with Paintstorm. This will just take a few minutes. I'm just going to show you the things that are different about. I don't know if you can see me anymore. I didn't realize the sun was like setting, but. That's not how Paintstorm is supposed to start. Hmm, that was kind of strange. All right, so with Paintstorm, my brushes are all in here. And you just slide it. You just drag and slide it. It's kind of cool. Just boom. You, know, you can also touch with your finger and slide if you have a touch screen. Now with this one here, uh, one of the main differences is, let's see here. I have this brush that's called Sky. And this is where, um, if I had a mountain or something like that, so let me go back to my mountain tools here. So I have my main, this is my, so I have a little icon there, like a little small knife icon, then my big knife icons for the bigger mountains. One's the texture knife and one's the, I don't know, something else. <laughs> I can't read it, it's so small. I can make it bigger, but let's go ahead and just add a basic, See this, look how that feels like oil. Like That's why I like this program. It's like, to me, that just feels so much more like oil and like I'm using an actual knife. Like, ah, oh, okay, after not using this for a little while and then using it now, I'm liking this a lot. Like, look at that. That's bitching. Okay, now we can add the texture. I'm kind of trying to see the difference here real fast. Yeah, I'm not sure what that that brush is for now. That knife. Oh, I think it's just a softer knife. Oh, foam. I don't know what that... I, I can't remember. It's been... That's what happens when you go a while without using it. That's right. This one doesn't have a... I can just do it that way. Oh, actually. Cool. This one, you can actually hold it down. That must have been a reset fix. I don't, I don't remember being that way. Anyway, you just kind of pull your... Look at that, see how much oily that is? And I'm not going to go all the way over. Didn't mean to do that, I meant to go like... Kind of add some, and then kind of come off like that. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh man, paint storm. Oh, I miss you. Look at that, it's like picking up the colors so well. Look at that, it's like, like, it's like a real... I'm using a real knife here. Love it. Add kind of a gray color to this side. Actually, I probably should make that a lot darker. There we go. A little bit too gray, but oh well. And this also has pit, um, pin tilt support. So the mountains, it's pretty much done the same but in my opinion, much easier and they look so cool. They look like oil. Anyway, so what I wanted to show, that's oh, right, duh, I can't, uh, I'm so, that's one thing I missed. See, they, that's one thing they're going to support soon, I think they said, was the pinch thing, uh, touch. It, if you get Paintstorm on an on a iPad, it supports all that, but it doesn't support it yet on PC, which is kind of strange, but whatever. Oh, I didn't need to zoom out anyway. But anyway, you can zoom out there. It's, it's fine. And then you can also move around like that. Okay, so now I would take my sky brush. And this is where I can take, in this case, is white. So I'm just going to take that white color. And I would kind of fade out the bottom. And also you can take your knife brush. Hold on. Let's take the knife brush here first. And let's kind of take our sky color and just kind of pull up. Like so, like we're just starting to fade out. And then we'll take our sky and just kind of make that mountain. I'm gonna do it kind of hard on the bottom so it totally disappears the bottom of the mountain. And then just lightly fade up. Exact same technique as if I were Bob Ross on TV right now. 
boom, just like that, done. Now you can also use the cloud brush too. I have different cloud brushes. I would probably use not that one. I know I have a soft cloud brush. I'm just trying to figure out which one. Is that the one that's okay? That one's kind of soft. Anyway, I can I can make a softer one, but. You can just do like, I need to make a mist brush in Paintstorm. I didn't even think about that because I, I usually use that one, this sky brush here is a mist brush. I kind of mix in between. I should add one with just a little bit of texture, a little bit of cloud texture. But anyway, so like that. So that's one thing. Oh, man, I'm so used to pinching it. That's one thing you can do that's a little bit different in Paintstorm. Now, the other thing I was talking about the trees in the background, you can actually use these kind of brushes that I made. And they add these kind of palm trees in the background. You can change the the brush size, of course, and you know make them bigger. Um, I feel like those ones are kind of cheating. You can do, you can do this one right here. I feel like this is kind of cheating too, but um, uh, that feels so much like oil. It feels so good. Nothing in Krita feels like this. But let's say I'm doing some trees in the background like this, right? And I just want to do like a like that, and then I want to do another valley of trees coming up this way. It's like really fast, and, and look at that. There's not, oops, ah, forgot. There's not too much texture, see? So it's a kind of, it's kind of a, it, to me it feels like cheating, but if you just wanted to get that, you know, lay down, lay it down really fast, it is a brush you can do that with. Um, there's also this one here. You can lay bigger ones or smaller ones, and again, this to me feels like cheating. Like that, and then you can, you can add some different colors on top of them. Um, I'm trying to remember what this brush is for. What are you for, brush? Oh, the pine tree. So this is one of the pine tree brushes. This one, this I don't know why I didn't try this texture in the other program. I think I'm pretty sure I have this texture, but you kind of go like that at an angle, and kind of pull up a little bit, and it kind of adds this more like bushy, like a more of a bushier type tree. And you can add, I'll just make it blue. We're in some other planet or something, and I don't know, trees are blue. Right, pretty cool. See how's that, I did that really fast and sloppily, but you get the idea. Uh, that one's pretty cool, I actually like that one. Then you have the same, oh, this, this one's actually different too. Uh, this one you can do all kinds of cool things with, but, um, you could do that same kind of, you know, tree type of thing, but it, it, you know, we want to go at a slight angle again with this one, like that, on each side, and then kind of go in the middle. And this just gives you kind of a more painter. It's kind of inter interesting look to it. Um, then this is the, the same exact one we had in the other program. Same texture, so. So with this one, it's the same same kind of way. Now it's facing up right now. I could go in and, and face it down, and uh, all the all your brush stuff is actually right here to do everything you want to do with Paintstorm, which is pretty awesome. So I can go in here and I can change all kinds of stuff. So in this one, if I wanted to change the, I click on the icon here and click on this icon, and that allows me to change the orientation of my brush. So right now it's facing that way. So basically all I'm going to do is the, I'm just going to face it the other way. Now they haven't, I don't know why they don't have touch for this yet. Oh wait, actually hold on a second. I forgot. There is a faster way to do this. So leave it like that. Bam. No. There we go. That flips it. So now it's instantly flipped. Now this one will actually save it this way. So I have to go back and change it. So if I switch, if I switch brushes and go back to that brush again, it's actually going to save it's, it's going to save the way I just did it. So you have to, you have to remember what changes you made because you have to go back and change if you need to. All right, so this one, um, same as before. It's just like the other. But this program does paint a little differently. Like this oils are just so much more oily. So as I come back and forth like this, look at that. I feel so much like, oh, man, I missed this program. 
That feels so much more like oil. Crit is nice though. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice program. Add a couple branches sticking out. Oh, this is so much faster and better though. And this is a faster program. Like if you wanted to do big files, you can do huge files and big brush strokes and this thing does not bog down on you. Let's go ahead and change this shape on the fly here. Add a couple more. Look at that. It just they look at the quality. I don't know, you just can't uh I'm going to use this brush right now to add that top little spike and then just a couple at the top there. Oh man, look at that. Look at the quality. Oh shit, can't do that's That's one thing I hate. That's what I love about Krita is I, can, I don't have to do this to zoom in it. I mean, that the quality of that looks like paint. It's just amazing. And so now I can go ahead and start getting bigger. That's, that's way too bright. Get a little bit bigger here. So what I like to do is I like to kind of just run it right along the edges first. This is faster for me, like like that, and then come here in the in the middle and just add some of those middle blades, and then maybe hit the other side just a little bit, and then I, and then I can always hit the other side with a different color, like kind of going toward purple but making it gray. Oops, meant to go down in size, not up. That wasn't much different, was it? There we go, a little bit lighter color. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm just trying to do this fast to show you the difference. Um, in case you're wondering, what program should I use? I try them both. They're both awesome. One's free, so that might be the breaker for you. Or that touch, you know, being able to touch zoom like that is why I've been painting in Krita the last couple of days, because I really like that option. But Paintstorm is coming out with that, so let's see, I almost did it again. And bam, got an awesome looking tree. It does give you a slightly different look, I think, between each program, the way the, I, I can probably turn the spacing down on this and probably get something similar to Krita, uh, but I really like that really bushy look. And I can always just take my time a little bit more and space it out a little bit more and get more of a spacier looking tree that has more spaces between it. Um, let's see here, what else is different? I mean, bushes, I love this bush. I mean, the way it paints bushes is just, it's, in my opinion, really good. And this brush here is just awesome for painting bushes. You can actually use this texture in Krita too, but the way this thing does textures is, is better than Krita. It, like, you notice that the reason why those mountain textures are so awesome is it's, it's changing the scale it, you can it, it's randomly changing the scale of the texture and and flipping it around so it's never the same with each stroke it's brilliant that they did that i have no idea why every program doesn't do that so we can add like a dark color here i'm gonna do kind of a blue color this time look at that just awesome you can just like lightly blend it together little round circles i push hard at first then i lightly blend it out a little bit and then hard and then blend that way it doesn't look too Textury, and I'm actually I need to space this way more. That's like the top of the tree, maybe. We gotta leave some. Like so, and then we'll do kind of an autumn tree, I guess. So I mean the techniques are the same, it's just the brushes are a little different, so. But the techniques I'm using are exactly the same I did in the other one for this. I just wanted to show you this. I know I, I, was, I said I was only going to show you like that, and so, and you can keep more space. Oh damn, I can't zoom in. Anyway, you can keep more space if you want to. But look at that texture is really nice. But yeah, if I want to, I can keep more space between that as well. And there's this brush, good for bushes and things like that. Um, that's just a straight, if you want, if you just want one tree, use your mouse or you can just click it and that's good to give you a base start and just make it dark. You have this kind of grass texture thing. These are more cheating brushes, you know, to give a couple quick pieces of grass. Rock, 
you just touch it and it gives you rock texture again cheating oh this is another one uh, I forgot about this texture this one gives you a really interesting kind of like pine tree so you kind of just come out like this you have to do each side though by itself but it's good for just adding the edges on there I'd have to then flip this around so I'd have to go into here here and then flip it and flip it is that gonna work no that's not right hold on let's try there we go no hold on. what am I trying to do here right now it's facing down like that so let me see if that works there we go and so it's kinda good just to add some of the edges kinda gives a different kind of texture as you can see you can also make it face up so all the leaves will be facing up that's kind of a cool looking tree as well I think I have this texture I'm pretty yeah I have to have this tech well, not texture but this brush shape I don't know why it's just hard to see in in Krita some of the when it shows you the texture like uh, some of them are so tiny I can't tell what it is I don't know why it changes the size of them like that this program makes it really easy to tell what texture or what brush tip you have uh, anyway so I have the awesome blender this is really really cool love this blender it has a little bit of texture to it and so the best way oh man I keep wanting to zoom in soon soon this program will have that so I can just come here I can kind of blend out but look it still has some texture I don't know if you can see that but you can just come in and you can blend some stuff out that's just too this is actually good too to blend out the edge of the mountain so you can just go like that and just swoop the mountain down and it'll actually just swoop into nothing and then just fade it out like that and it's awesome let's say this tree with the edge of our mountain just to give an idea because I already got rid of the mountain just kind of pull it down like this and notice it has a little bit of texture to it and then just kind of little circles and then kind of pull that bam and you actually leave some texture in there it's really nice um, this is another kind of I'm trying to remember what this does hold on oh this is a blender too okay so I thought this is another blender it's a kind of a texture blender and you can get a little different more of like a rocky kind of texture out of it it's pretty awesome and so yeah the water oh this is the water edge this is really good to build like the edge of water um, and then one of the things that's a little different in this one is the water brushes they're really cool so I have water two and water one so in this case I would use a sky for example right sky brush and I would just lay in some sky color here just to show you what the water is going to look like here and I can actually get most of the water color in here right with this brush right now just bam, just kind of get in there like that and then you can pull down this you know your reflections and things like that but let's use water two for a second turn the brush down it's just way too big and just lightly touch boom I can't get this look I just I was trying so hard to get these kind of water brushes but I mean still you saw how good my water looked in that painting I mean it still looked good it's just to get this kind of look though it's just so hard to do in the other program I just I tried to use this, these textures and everything I just wasn't working the other program and Krita this one's really cool to just get some nice streaks and then kind of blend them away it's, so you kind of push a little bit harder and then just really lightly and then go back to the other brush you can like blend those out anyway just really great ah oh, damn it <laughs> I want to zoom in with my hands or zoom out but uh, really great for for water and you can like you can pull things down with it you know pull the colors down and swipe it across it works just like Bob Ross this this program you feel more like you're painting traditionally with PaintStorm than you do with Krita. But Krita is still a good program. For being free, it's absolutely an amazing program. Like that picture I did, that, that portrait came out so good. I, I, I might enjoy it better for portraiture and stuff like that. Um, I haven't really 
I imagine if I just tweaked one of these brushes, like one of my oil brushes on here, I haven't really tried to paint with this thing yet, like actually paint like a portrait or something with it really. But um, I think I painted something with it though. Didn't I paint that one painting with it? Oh yeah, that's right. I think I did this painting with it. Hold on. I'm pretty sure this this is one of my symbolism paintings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I painted that with it. And it's uh like I said, it's one of my symbol it's just part of my uh symbolism figure collection. Really like the way the colors came out in this one. Look at the oily look of the rocks. Just it's really awesome. Yeah, but uh, basically everything everything in here has a meaning. There's a reason why the church slash, you know, the religious building is upside down and all these social media buildings are right side up and why her brain is being washed with soap, brainwashed, and, you know, why she has a chain holding this girl. All this, it all has meaning to it and why she's, like, more robotic than her. Notice she doesn't have nipples, though. They, they, they might look like nipples. I probably should make them different colors so you can tell they're not nipples, like maybe blue or something. But anyway, so yeah, um, you can see the quality of the, the brush strokes in this thing. This is the smaller version, too. Some of it is, you know, like from normal viewing distance, it's absolutely fantastic. It doesn't look blurry at all. Like, it's like oil, even though I, you know, spent some time to really blend some of it. It just looks really good. And then when I, when I wanted it sharper, it stayed sharper. But I really like the way Krita works for two as well. I mean, they're both awesome programs. I just, I like the way this one feels. And uh, I just wish I had this, that zoom capability. But like I said, I imagine if I take my mountain, this knife here, and I turn it into a paintbrush, like just change some of the texture and stuff out of it. I can probably turn it into a nice brush because it has a nice oily feel to it. Let me see how it feels to just kind of do a a meatball. By meatball, I mean a flesh ball is what I should have said. Hey, look at that. It's like, boom, you pull it one stroke and then you can kind of just give it a little bit of blend. And then let's do a more saturated. Let's change the brush size a little bit. Sorry, I figured this video is so long already, so I'm just like goofing around real quick. Now you can't really blend, you know, you gotta use a blender, but I'm trying to, that's the whole point is I'm trying not to blend. Like with oils, you wanna try not to blend if you can. Lay all your colors where you need them. And then let's go ahead and add kind of a warm direct light onto this thing. It's more of like a when I do blend, it feels more like oil, like I'm like I'm just pushing that paint, just lightly blending it out. And I could also use a a blender tool, but yeah, I like that. I mean, that right there is pretty easy to do. It's a little bit too much texture um, in that, so I can take some, I can change the texture to more of a canvas texture, and that would probably be a really good paintbrush, and then maybe change the shape of it. Um, Take this exact same shape and maybe recreate it, make it more roundish, more ovalish or something. But yeah, so anyway, that's pretty much it. I think that's all the differences I wanted to talk about. Um, this one has birds too. The other one has a bird texture, so if you want to make a bird brush, you can. These clouds are a little different, so let me go ahead and explain that really quick. Now we'll end with that. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know what, that's going to take too long. Let's just make a new layer. <laughs> and then. Boom. It's actually easier to lay down sky when it's a blank canvas. Look how fast this program is. It's just ridiculously fast. Now this, you can actually lay down some basic clouds with this thing. You just wanted some like misty clouds. And then you can use the, the one of the blenders, you know, to let's say like this, not water edge, that's not a blender, this blender here. You can just lightly blend Get kind of like this weird oily smeary cloud thing going on anyway 
let's go back to clouds. All right, so you have this cloud brush here, which is pretty cool. This one is for more, you want that kind of more crazy, sharp cloud look. And then after you have your cloud down, that's where you go and you take one of the blenders. And so you can either use, um, I think you can even use the water brush and kind of just, you can blend that out. You can also use my awesome blender, which is right here. And this adds just a little bit of texture into it, but I can just kind of pull it back and forth and just lightly pull on it. And it does that as a little texture to it though. You can also use this blender here. I can't remember if this one adds texture. Let me see. Yeah, it kind of does. That's too much blending. But there's a blender that comes with this program. Um, you know what? I forgot how to do. Oh, that's right. All the brushes are right here. Duh, they're icons. So, actually, I do have a painter brush that I use. I use these painter brushes when I'm painting. And I, I think I want to try, like this one right here, my oily brush. Anyway, I think I want to try, though, to turn my rock brush into a painter brush. I'm trying to find... This is a blender brush. So you just lightly make it really big. And you just lightly go, not too big. <laughs> you just lightly go across it like that, and it kind of softens it out. And you, can, you can even go little circles and soften out the bottom, and you can kind of lift up. And now you got this kind of cloud like that. So that's one thing you can do. Then you go back in with a softer cloud brush. Let's say like this cloud brush here. Ah, hitting the wrong buttons. And you can come in, add to some more soft clouds back in there. Like that. And then you can wisp that again. There's another brush. It's under, I think this right here. No, it's under blenders. Where's blenders at? Flat bristle brushes. Oh, I have blenders. I think it's right there. No, blenders. There we go. Like that. Okay, it looks like a teardrop. And it's the third one down. And you can just kind of lightly, you got to barely touch it. And it's like the wind just blew some of that up and then just, whoa. It's a lot more sensitive than I remember. Just lightly. I mean, you got to just barely touch your canvas. And you can just lightly go like that and get a nice cloud blown up. You can also mess with the cloud parameters by, you know, turning them down a little bit. Anyway, so that's some of the differences. Um, Paint Storm has a much more oily feel to it, and you can you can really get those mountains done much faster. Um, maybe not faster, but it just feels better and has more texture and some paint mixing going on where it looks more like a natural media. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry that it's like two hour long video, but. All right, so yeah, I guess I unplugged the microphone, so it stopped recording voice, but it doesn't matter. I need to be done anyway. I just wanted to show you guys this cool thing at the end of the video where I show a piece I'm working on that there's a baby. It's a, my symbolism figure collection. And, and by the way, if you guys got anything out of this at all, if it if it helped you enjoy the joy of painting, you know, you can actually follow along with Bob Ross now digitally, and that's absolutely amazing. And it's just it's an amazing feeling to be able to to paint this cool stuff. So if you get anything out of this at all, please share this with you know your social media because even just sharing it with one person just one person, that person might share it with, you know, their social media and then maybe maybe 10 people will come and look at the video. Like you just never know. So every one of you helps if you just share it on your favorite social media. Please do that. If you've got anything out of this because let's pay it forward. Let's help other people learn how to paint. It's, you know, it's really important. And uh, yeah, I want to feel like I made this super long video showing you how to use all these cool brushes and base I basically taught you how to paint like Bob Ross. You can actually take a lot of this right over to to oil paints. Um, you know of course you have to learn a little bit more about the brushes and how to angle the brushes and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a course on that. Anyway, I was just showing you guys here the char this character is actually part of my figure collection. Notice her hair is not hair. It's actually like these like blade things. And that's uh, these characters that I do. There, some of them are more more doll-like than others. Some of that is, some of them are more, um, I guess, cyborg or not cyborgs, but uh, what would they be? They are 
synthetic people. <laughs> um, here you can kind of see how much how how more synthetic she is. You can actually see some of the lines on her body. But yeah, they're kind of like they got these. You know, some have got crystal-like hair. Some have more like this, like metal-like hair. Uh, but it's for I can do these really abstract shapes. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys and uh, females, obviously everybody, people. And have a good one. Enjoy painting. I hope that you get something. If you get something out of this, also leave a comment and let me know what you painted. All right, bye.